Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's October 27, 2016. I'm your host, Owen Troyer. Here's what's on the news tonight. Tonight, mainstream media not only hides its bias, but gets downright criminal in its support of Hillary. Recently, we've seen the New York Times exposed for secretly working with Hillary to promote her, allowing her even to edit their articles about her. But now Montel Williams says a New York Times reporter threatened to publish his home address if he didn't work with him on a Trump hit piece. Then, the FBI questioned Hillary for about the same time they questioned Brad and Angelina. Everyone was amazed that Comey would let Hillary off even after he admitted she committed multiple felony violations. We look at Judge Napolitano's report breaking down the backstory that you haven't heard about the FBI. And it can't be happening. The experts who said Brexit couldn't win, yet the economy has grown two and a half times what the experts projected. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Owen Schroyer for InfoWars.com. We've got a ton of news to cover tonight, so let's dig right in. Let's start off in Russia, where Russians are preparing for World War III, a nuclear attack. I'm not sure exactly what, but this is some serious training going down. 40 million people involved, and this has been going on for days. They've been doing this for a while. There's some uh, pretty terrifying video on this story, if you want to go check it out on The Sun, showing exactly how the Russians are training. I don't see anything like this in the United States. I don't hear them covering this on the news. This is a big deal. Why are Russians preparing like this for World War III, perhaps, for a nuclear detonation, perhaps? What is going on in Russia? Now, Putin has made more statements recently saying that anybody saying that Russia is meddling in the U.S. election is absolutely hysterical. I guess he's talking about Hillary Clinton. President, President Vladimir Putin slammed as hysteria Thursday's claims that Russia has tried to interfere in the upcoming U.S. presidential elections by hacking political institutions, including the Democrats behind the frontrunner Hillary Clinton. So somebody's lying here. Is it Putin? Is it Hillary? Well, I know Hillary is a pathological liar, so if I had to bet, I would probably go with Hillary Clinton. But isn't that crazy? We've got two world leaders with two completely opposite opinions. If you take this from a nonpartisan perspective, one of the two has got to be lying. That is a serious problem when we've got world leaders that are just bold-faced liars. But I think we know who Hillary Clinton really is. Now, speaking of Hillary Clinton, this shows you just how the FBI is colluding with her. This story, FBI questions Angelina Jolie for over four hours over child abuse allegations. So the FBI, for some reason, thinks it's so important, they're going to investigate Brangelina for over four hours. But let's recall, when they investigated Hillary Clinton, they only questioned her for three and a half hours. So it's more important to look into the children of celebrities than it is to look into our national security. Why is the FBI even looking into Brangelina at all? That, I think, is where we can start and end that conversation if you want to go there. And then, of course, they basically publicly indict Hillary Clinton with their rhetoric, and then they, of course, let her walk. Now, if you want to know the real state of the Hillary Clinton campaign, I think I can sum it up with this story that just broke. Tim Kaine has had to cancel an event. A Hillary Clinton rally has been canceled. Tim Kaine was set to speak, and they canceled the event. Now, they haven't said why they've canceled the event, but folks, you know, I know, they know, because nobody wants to go. He had an event, and 30 people showed up. It was an outright embarrassment. This is the true state of the Hillary Clinton campaign, canceling events because nobody is going to show up. And if you want to know how they really operate, look at this, folks. WikiLeaks, Clinton team leaked creep shot of Bernie Sanders in his swimming suit. The Clinton campaign buzzed over a picture of Bernie Sanders in his swimming suit. Yeah, because they've got nothing else to buzz about. Bill Clinton chief of staff Tina Flournoy emailed the attached photo of Sanders. And this is the Clinton camp who openly mocks Bernie Sanders in their emails. They openly mock Bernie Sanders supporters. Sanders still campaigns for her and Sanders supporters are still going to vote for her. How is this possible? But this is, again, this just shows you how desperate the Clinton camp is when they're canceling events and putting 
photos of Bernie Sanders in a swimsuit out and buzzing about it as if that's some story. Ex-Secret Service officer behind Clinton tell-all planning to start a defamation suit. Now, folks, this is big. A former Secret Service officer, Gary Byrne, we've had him on our shows before, who published an explosive tell-all from his days guarding Bill and Hillary Clinton in the White House, is about to file a defamation lawsuit against his detractors in specific Media Matters for America and David Brock. Please help us take down David Brock. Maybe we can start it with this defamation suit, and then maybe we can catch him for the money laundering that we know he is guilty of. The letter requests Brock and Media Matters to hold all records and communications associated with their communications regarding Byrne, including any communications between Brock and Clinton regarding Byrne, suggesting there might be collusion. That's right, folks. The Democratic crime machine is collapsing, and David Brock is part of that machine. If he gets exposed in this lawsuit, folks, I mean, we're, Kramer's already out, Fovel's out. If we get David Brock out and Hillary Clinton out, folks, I mean, we're talking about pillars of the Democratic corruption here that are deteriorating. This is huge. Now, we may have heard the story about Trump star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame getting smashed. The suspect has now been arrested and charged with vandalism. James Otis was taken into custody. He's the suspect um, on the felony of vandalism. Of course, it's funny because I don't know how you call him a suspect. He was caught on camera. He brags about it. Otis said his motive for destroying the star involves sexual assault allegations against Trump. So a total brainwashed zombie. Here's what's funny. In the quote, he says, I have four or five family members who were sexually assaulted. Four or five. He doesn't know. He doesn't know, folks. This is such a big deal to him. This is so big. He has four or maybe five. He doesn't know, but he's got family members that are guilty, or I'm sorry, that have been abused by sexual assault. And now he says that the presidential nominee from the Republicans is the poster child for sexual assault. No, I have some news for you. That's actually thanks to the propaganda on the television. That's not actually the case. It wasn't the case before he started running for president. Why is it the case now? Television propaganda. Very, very simple. And here's an example of how they try to do it. Montel Williams, New York Times reporter, threatened to publish his address over a recent Trump story. He tweeted out, New York Times reporter threatened to publish my address if I didn't talk to him about this useless story. And the story was a New York Times hit piece. Um, people saying they can't live in Trump Tower anymore. They're embarrassed about it. It's funny, they had no problem living there before. Again, this is the propaganda working. Um, Times feature writer Jacob Bernstein was asking Williams, who lives in one of the Trump buildings, to cooperate with the story. In other words, go along with our hit piece against Donald Trump, or we're going to libel and slander you. Oh, it's funny how that works. The Democrats like intimidating people on the streets. They like intimidating people in the media. Now, recent polls coming out of California are saying that Trump has no chance in California. Numbers are dropping into uncharted territory. But here's the thing, it wouldn't matter. Trump could, Trump could not get one vote in California, and it wouldn't affect the results of this election. California is essentially a super delegate for the Democrats in the general election. You get 20% of what's needed out of the electoral to college to win the election if you win California. This is a super delegate for the Democratic Party California, Trump has no chance. Of course he doesn't. It's the superdelegate for the Democrats. We've seen Hillary use it before. Live from Trump Tower, this is, a, I believe, out of Yahoo. Yahoo is bashing Donald Trump all day. Live from Trump Tower, the ultimate conspiracy theory. Now, they try to make fun of Trump Tower TV, which is doing live broadcasts now. This is the anti-Trump propaganda. This is all we get from Yahoo. I actually had another push notification come to my cell phone right before I started this segment. Another woman is coming forward saying that Donald Trump grabbed her butt uh, in a taxi 50 years ago. And, um, of course, this goes out over all the mainstream news. No lawsuits, though. They don't want to litigate for some reason. They just want to accuse. Now, in this story, they say how easy it is for any moron with a laptop and a dream to perfectly imitate the cheerful vacuousness of most TV news. Now, actually, I would agree with this. I would agree with this, but they use this to try to demonize what Trump Tower TV is doing. No, this is the state of the mainstream news. The mainstream news is so pathetic that, just like you said, anybody can pick up a laptop and try to be honest on air, and they will defeat the mainstream news. This is why InfoWars is taking off, folks, and we thank you for your support. Now, Trump is warning of vote flipping on machines. This is a story out of InfoWars. Now, I listened to this all morning when I was 
driving into work, folks. Texas voting machines are switching from Donald Trump to Hillary Clinton. We recall this happened for Ted Cruz in Texas during the primaries. Now it's happening in the general to Donald Trump. This is why Texas electioneer officials will not speak with our reporters. They know that they're guilty. Megyn Kelly is seeking a salary north of $20 million with Fox News. She's not worth 20 cents, in my opinion, if that matters to anybody. I would like to see that wench off Fox News. I think that would be great. Now, I remember mainstream news saying that the U.K. economy was going to collapse if they voted for Brexit. But what's this? U.K. economy grows half percent in three months after Brexit vote. The U.K. economy grew a half percent in three months after the Brexit vote. The Office for National Statistics has said, wow, well, I'll tell you, if that trend continues, I think they're going to be happy with that Brexit vote. Don't you think that Brexit vote is looking pretty good? And where's the mainstream news? The economy was supposed to collapse. Oh, my gosh, it was all out chaos if the Brexit vote won. Oh, my gosh, but here we are seeing the economy grow. Folks, this is an example of what we'll see in America if we elect Donald Trump. I guarantee it. Now, Angela Merkel, I'm going to have to agree with her for a second without vomiting here, says Facebook, Google distort perception and demands they reveal algorithms. She said that these algorithms, when they are not transparent, can lead to a distortion of our perception. They narrow our breadth of information. Oh my goodness, am I agreeing with Angela Merkel? Did she just say something that is true? Wow, shocking. And of course, we see this in triplicate with Google and YouTube basically trying to rig and manipulate this election for Hillary Clinton. We have documented this. We know about the voter fraud. We know about the mainstream media. Just like Donald Trump says, she has broken the law. She should not even be allowed to run, folks. The things that she's guilty of, people in the military have suffered stricter punishments from. Of course, anything stricter than what she got, she got nothing. She got a, She didn't even get a slap on the wrist. She gets absolutely nothing. This woman got more of a punishment than Hillary Clinton did. And this is another protest of the national anthem. 76ers stop singer from performing national anthem with a We Matter jersey on. Now, Seven Streeter was set to perform the national anthem, but she never made it out onto the court. And I, I you know, this is a tough one because we, we are all about free speech here at InfoWars. But I'd, I'd have to say that I agree with this decision because all, of these, all these people are doing is they're making it about themselves. We had another person sing the national anthem on a knee with a Black Lives Matter shirt on, okay? This is people singing the national anthem and making it about them. Instead of saying, wow, what an honor it is to sing the national anthem at such a big event, they say, hmm, how can I make this about me? How can I draw attention to myself? And I salute the 76ers for pulling her from doing this because all this does is justify the false narrative justifies all the divide and conquer tactics that are going on in this nation and it has not helped whatsoever so may I, will we ever see an end to this are we ever going to see an end to people protesting the national anthem how does it end i'm not sure uh, maybe that's how you take away their platform you take the attention off of them and all of a sudden what do you know they quit their protest i guarantee you if she would have known that her protesting the national anthem would have resulted in her getting booted from singing it, she would not have done it because she still wants to be on the main stage. Absolutely. Now, folks, this is a big story, and this can really show you how the system works um, systematically uh, time and time again, how they have these plans. New technology at Detroit Metro Airport allows travelers to move through security lines in a flash. So here's what they're going to do, folks. It's called CLEAR, certified as a Qualified anti-terrorism technology by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. They use a government identification that's validated using technology. And then we link to their biometrics. We take 10 fingerprints with a digital reader. We take a scan of their iris and we take a high-res photo of their face. So basically, <laughs> they can identify you with just a flash of a camera with facial recognition, iris recognition, they use our cell phones to do this. They use apps like Snapchat to do this. And this is the mark of the beast, folks, where you can't go anywhere without being recognized because there's scanners everywhere scanning their face. But see, they sell it to you as safety. 
See, what they do is first they tell you you can't get on an airplane without getting groped by the TSA, as we see the, the logo right behind us. That's how they like to grope you. Oh, okay, so this is for our safety. Oh, but you know what? We're seeing the lines getting really long. This is starting to frustrate Americans. So what are we going to do? Well, let's go ahead and unveil this clear technology here, which makes us take your fingerprints, scan your face, scan your iris, and now we've got you. Now we've got you on everything. Now we can scan you. Now we can identify you with the facial recognition technology that's built into everything. But hey, it's for your safety, and it's so you can get through that, that pesky line at the airport quicker. Now, of course, this is also about business. This is going to cost you $179 a year if you want to enroll in this program. It's always about money. It's always about business. But they're still going to make you go through x-rays and body scans. So that's nice. They're still going to zap you before they let you get on the plane. Scientists discover elixir of youth. Now, I always find these stories funny. Scientists in the U.S. claim to have discovered a natural compound in avocado, broccoli, and cucumber that has remarkable anti-aging effects in mice and could also work for humans. It's funny. We see all these new ad campaigns with food. All natural, no more preservatives, real food. Well, what were you serving to us before? Perhaps that's what's making all of us sick. And, of course, these are the types of ingredients that go into all the products at Infowars.com. Dinosaur brain tissue discovered for the first time in a 130-year-old million fossil. They have soft brain tissue from a dinosaur. This is pretty cool stuff. Now, I wish that we could do this. I wish that we could cover fossils and our history and going to the stars. Donald Trump says he wants to make NASA relevant again. But instead, I got to come on here and I got to talk about World War III. I got to talk about rigged elections because this is what's going on in this country. I hope that someday we all wake up and we can grow together to figure out what's actually going on in the world. This is Owen Troy for InfoWars.com. We'll be right back with more on the InfoWars Nightly News. We would have a country that would be in much better shape than it's, you know, highways. They build highways for double and triple the cost. They build hospitals. And so to people who say you're taking time out of swing states to go do this, you say? I say the following. You have been covering me for the last long time. For you to ask me that question is actually very insulting because Hillary Clinton does one stop and then she goes home and sleeps. Uh, and yet you'll ask me that question. I think it's a very rude question, to be honest with you. Now I know what you're thinking. Why would Hillary Clinton and her minions accuse anyone of taking the day off? All it does is draw attention to the fact that Hillary Clinton needs a lot of nap time to gear up for those 10-minute speeches. But this is Alinsky 101. It's been used by the left for decades. Accuse your opponents of something you yourself are guilty of. Keep them on the defense, and then that way they can never build an offense to attack you. Now let's just kind of, a little history lesson here. Who is Saul Alinsky? He is considered to be the guru of all community organizers, and uh, he actually developed the organizational manual for aspiring Marxist revolutionaries here in the U.S., the infamous Rules for Radicals. So this is kind of the agitprop or agitators propagandist technique. So this has been used by the left in the inner cities. Uh, it's also used on college campuses. We know that Hillary Clinton actually did her senior thesis on Alinsky. Um, Obama was really fond of his teachings. A lot of people said his 2008 presidential campaign was influenced by Alinsky's teachings. And of course, a lot of internet trolls use Saul Alinsky's tactics. So these are the 13 rules uh, for radicals. Which, by the way, let's just back it up a little bit. He actually dedicated this book, Rules for Radicals, to Lucifer. Yes, there in the book, it's dedicated to Lucifer, who he says is the original radical who rebelled against the establishment and gained a whole kingdom. So that's just to give you a little idea of who this Alinsky is um, and why they left idolize him, I guess. But if you look at rule number 11, if you push a negative hard and deep enough, it will break through into its counterside. So the winner in politics is almost always whoever is on offense. So if you make your opponent spend all their time refuting charges that they're extremists, racists, they hate women, they despise the poor, that means they are losing. And that's why Trump's always winning, because he's always going on the attack. He doesn't fall for that PC BS, and he calls him out on it, just like he did Dana Bash. So this is what they hope to do, is if they're they're always constantly accusing you of things, you don't have time to go after them. 
So that's why we see things like this WikiLeaks, where we're finding out now that it was actually the Clinton team who leaked the creeper shot of Bernie Sanders in his swimsuit. And this was something that they were going to do to try to accuse Bernie Sanders of being lazy. He was just lazing about in the Hamptons, taking money from Wall Street, which we know Hillary Clinton is the number one recipient of Wall Street money. And let's not forget that she was the one who didn't bother to visit any of the flood victims because she was fundraising in the Hamptons with Cher. So she's accusing Bernie Sanders of something she herself is guilty of. Uh, we also know that uh, Donald Trump uh, was not afraid to point out the fact that Bill Clinton is, is rapey and he's a sexual assaulter and Hillary Clinton set the standards for what's okay for the president to do while he's in the White House. So the fact that uh, he actually went after Bill Clinton, well then, so they got to go in their Alinsky handbook and you know, we're going to accuse you of being a sexual assaulter, Donald Trump. It doesn't matter if it's true or not, because a lot of people will just think, well, if there's smoke, there's fire, and they'll believe those charges. This is right there, rule number 11. This is the tactic. So we know that uh, leaked emails, Hillary Clinton's own campaign, her own staffers were struggling to deal with William J. Clinton's issues um, and trying to kind of prep Hillary Clinton to have to deal with a lot of this backlash. Um, we also know that Hillary Clinton tried to come out accusing Donald Trump of the whole birtherism, saying that Trump's birther claims are based on racism, but that's of course been debunked, debunked because she and her campaign were actually the ones who started the whole birtherism. They put out the, the picture of Obama in Somali garb. They were really working on how to expose and exploit Obama's lack of American roots. And they actually went out and accused Obama, you know, they blasted him for suggesting the photo of him in Somali garb was a, a Why would you say this is controversial photo, Obama? How, how dare you? So they turned it around on him. So you have to understand what's happening there. This is Saul Linsky 101. He's a favored Luciferian of the left. And this is why Trump is going to win this. As you see, uh, top forecasters say, it's not over yet. Don't get too comfortable, Hillary Clinton, because Donald Trump will win. Knock on your door. Could it be an illegal alien canvassing your neighborhood, begging you to vote for Hillary Clinton? The criminal candidate that will fight for the 750,000 illegals under DACA that has already been struck down by the Supreme Court. The propaganda shills at the Washington Post report, quote, four years after the DACA program was launched, many of the beneficiaries are still in a kind of limbo, unsure about whether their status would be renewed under a President Trump and concerned that their family members could be deported. The uncertainty was underscored earlier this year when the U.S. Supreme Court let stand a federal court injunction. I will do what I can as president. I'm hoping if we win back the Senate and we win the White House again, the Republicans are going to see the error of their ways and quit using immigrants to divide our country and quit taking the kind of mean-spirited actions that they do. You know, I was the first person to call out Donald Trump. I said, basta, enough of this prejudice and paranoia and the kind of language that he uses. So, and quit using immigrants to divide our country. President Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton couldn't even help the people they were attempting to illegally protect. The American Constitution and the 4-4 vote at the Supreme Court put a stop to that. Or maybe that knocking at your door is the Pentagon demanding their money back with interest. The LA Times reported short of troops to fight in Iraq and Afghanistan a decade ago, the California National Guard enticed thousands of soldiers with bonuses of 15000 or more to re-enlist and go to war. Now the Pentagon is demanding the money back. Nearly 10,000 soldiers, many of whom served multiple combat tours, have been ordered to repay large enlistment bonuses and slapped with interest charges, wage garnishments, and tax liens if they refuse. After audits revealed widespread overpayments by the California Guard at the height of the war's last decade, roughly $30 million needs to be paid back. Meanwhile, the Pentagon's black budget, taxpayer money, fueling the unconstitutional 
Biden's COG shadow government rose from $52.6 billion in 2013 to $59 billion in 2015. Or maybe that person knocking on your door is an Obamacare rep who stopped by to tell you that your premiums have gone up by at least 25%, warning you to be prepared when your medications have to be switched because the health insurance companies are jumping overboard from the Titanic that is the Affordable Care Act. One fix that would drive premiums down. Look, once again, there's no sense in which this has to be fixed. The law's working as, as designed. Well, whoever it is, you should probably exit your home from a back door and get out there and get in that early vote. Because at least that vote will put a stop to this bureaucratic liberal madness, right? Early voter Lisa Howlett reported Republican straight ticket was highlighted. However, the Clinton cane box was also highlighted. I tried to go back and change and could not get it to work. Shandy Clark also reported, I had a family member that voted this morning and she voted straight Republican. She checked before she submitted and the vote had changed to Clinton. Is it any wonder why Hillary Clinton is soaring in all of the fake polls while her VP candidate can only attract an audience of 30 to his rally? While Trump and Pence bring in tens of thousands, the entire machine is rigged, not just the voting booths, the entire damnation that is our federal government, top to bottom. It's the great American screw job. And just in time for Election Day, the scum that has risen to the top of the globalist owned and taxpayer funded bureaucracy want you to know just how much they really loathe you, America. John Bound for Influence.com. It has become a giant circus to distract us from the fact that our entire future is being stolen. We'll be back. If Hillary Clinton is elected president, she will be the most openly corrupt individual to ever do so. Many people are guilty of corruption. They hide it. It comes out after they become president. But Hillary Clinton, we know going in with these email scandals, a massive felonies committed in violation of national security. Everyone knows about this. Now, Judge Napolitano has an interesting article on antiwar.com where he talks to law enforcement sources who give him a chronology and talk about how this went in their lingo sideways. I think it's important to look at this. We've talked about the background of James Comey, how he was, at the time, HSBC was getting multiple uh, convictions on money laundering. He was on the board of HSBC, and it was Loretta Lynch that let them go. Uh, saying that they're too big to jail. That was the way the Rolling Stone and many uh, people characterize that, rightfully so. Also, in the past, the two of them had worked together to let Sandy Berger violate national security law, steal classified documents to cover up information that they did not want to get out about the Clintons as the 9-11 Commission was operating. So let's take a look at what Judge Napolitano gives us from his FBI sources. Now, he points out the FBI began investigating the Clinton email scandal in the spring of 2015. Six months later... The senior FBI agent in charge of that investigation resigned from the case and retired from the FBI because he felt the case was going sideways. That's law enforcement jargon for nowhere by design. They didn't want to get a conviction, in other words, and we knew that. Now, this was uh, John Giacalone. He'd been a chief for the New York City, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. field offices of the FBI. And at the time of his sideways comment, he was chief of FBI National Security Branch. So this is under his investigation. Now, they say Giacalone knew that without a grand jury, the FBI would be toothless as it would have no subpoena power. And if you remember, when we go back and look at the comments that Judge Napolitano was making at the time, he said it's very encouraging to see them giving amnesty to people who were low down in the investigation. That means that they want to find out what they know so they can use it against the people at the top. That's what they always do. And an honest law enforcement agent like Judge Napolitano would know that, would know what the tactics and techniques are. But that doesn't work with the Clintons. We've seen this 20 years ago with Charlie Tree and what happened, the Chinese uh, money laundering that was going on under Bill Clinton. They gave Charlie Tree immunity, but they didn't use it to get the Clintons. They just gave him immunity because he's with the Clintons. Same thing happened with these investigations. He talks about it as the investigation dragged on in secret and Donald Trump simultaneously began to rise in Republican pri presidential primaries. It became more apparent to Jack Aloney's successors that the goal of the FBI was to exonerate Clinton. When she was interviewed on July 2nd, remember, 4th of July weekend, for only four hours, during which the interviewer seemed to summon the Bureau to lack aggression, passion, or determination. Yeah, 
They did not want to find anything. Some FBI agents privately came to the same conclusion as their former boss. The case was going sideways, they said. A few determined agents, who, however, were frustrated by Clinton's professed lack of memory. Remember, she said, oh, I can't remember any of that stuff. So they said, all right, let's get some medical information about this. So they sought, according to Judge Napolitano and his sources inside law enforcement, they sought to obtain her medical records to verify the gravity of her injury and to determine whether she had been truthful with them. They prepared the paperwork to get the records, only to have their request denied by Director Comey himself on July 4th. Then some agents did the unthinkable, he said. They reached out to colleagues in the intelligence community. They asked them to get the, uh, the records on Clinton's medical history so they could show them to Comey. The National Security Agency, as he points out, can access anything. When Comey learned of these efforts, he headed them off the next morning with his now infamous news conference in which he announced that Clinton would not be indicted. You understand? So here you've got a situation where Hillary Clinton claims uh, she has amnesty, or amnesty, she has amnesia, so she should have amnesty. She says she has amnesia uh, because of a medical issue. And they say, well, fine, let's, let's see what her true condition is. But no, we can't have information about Hillary Clinton's true medical conditions either. Everything must be concealed for Hillary Clinton. And the FBI agent in charge, uh, the, the one in charge of everything, Jack Comey, the most politicized FBI agency that people in our lifetime have seen, covers up for her. And he points out, three months later, just before the election of Hillary Clinton, perhaps, is what he thinks will probably happen. We've now learned that President Obama regularly communicated with Clinton via her personal email servers about matters that the White House considered to be classified. And then this week, he points out, we found out that Andrew McKay, who was the successor to Jack Aloney, head of the FBI Washington field office, presently the number three person in the FBI is, guess what, married to a woman to whom the Clinton money machine in Virginia funneled about $675,000 in lawful campaign funds for a failed 2015 run for the Virginia Senate. You understand? It's pay for play. It's the network of cronyism. It's what we've seen with Hillary Clinton on and on. It's important to understand that there are people in the government, in the NSA, in the intelligence offices, in the FBI who know precisely what's going on. Now, unfortunately, under this corrupt administration, the only option they have is to resign. They're not going to get anybody in the Obama administration, and they won't get anybody in the Hillary Clinton administration to pay attention to what they're telling us. But if we have a President Donald Trump, I think that's going to change. And Judge Napolitano ends with this. He says, this isn't your grandfather's FBI or your father's FBI. It's the Obama FBI. See, that's the state of corruption that we have now in Washington. Never before has it been this open, this in your face. Remember, Richard Nixon was impeached because he approached the IRS to do audits against his political enemies. And the IRS commissioner at the time exposed it. That's why he was impeached. Instead, under an Obama administration, the FBI, the corrupt FBI, goes along with them and continues to do it even after it sees the light of day, even after everybody knows that this is a politicized attack, the IRS continues to do so, the Obama administration continues to do so. That is a level of corruption that we face. For InfoWars.com, I'm David Knight. New information coming out about Erica Garner, and she's ripping the Clinton camp for WikiLeaks, of course, a series of emails about her father. Her dad, Eric Garner, was, of course, killed by police, a chokehold victim. Hillary Clinton's campaign in a series of tweets on Thursday afternoon, the new campaign emails released by WikiLeaks, they show how Hillary Clinton staffers discussed the death of Erica's father. This is what Erica had to say about it. She says, I'm troubled by the revelation that you and this campaign actually discussed using Eric Garner. Why would you want to use my dad? Well, Garner tweeted this along with a link to the email release by WikiLeaks. 
And I've got news for you, sweetheart, that fits into their narrative well. They want to incite violence in this country by paying rioters that they can't do it any other way. And they're trying to use this tragedy. You know, Clinton, she never wasted a good tragedy, mind you. And uh, the unfortunate death of uh, Eric Garner at the hands of police, regardless of the circumstance, it, they're trying to capitalize it, of course. And we know this because of WikiLeaks, the cashy dump of emails. And these tweets reflecting uh, what Erica Garner has to say about Clinton and about how she feels about it. You know, she's she's seen speaking in Harlem in April, and Garner, she's tweeting a, a links as well to hacked emails from the Clinton campaign, Jer, uh, John Podesta, and those were released by WikiLeaks that show this internal communication dialogue uh, between Clinton's top staffers about how, how best to word an editorial piece on gun violence. They're trying to use this tragedy to craft a false narrative about gun violence and curbing guns and the Second Amendment in this country. They're trying to take advantage of it. You know, we've seen her do this. We saw her campaign buy ads on the Weather Channel to promote her message during the hurricane season. We've seen her use every major human tragedy possible. It wouldn't be a shock that she would take someone's death and try to spin it and craft a narrative. But what is shocking uh, to me personally is that Erica Garner is wise to the WikiLeaks email cache dump and is calling it for what it is. And the opportunist, the ever opportunist that Clinton is, this just highlights that yet again. And Erica Garner ripping the Clinton camp over emails of her father's death. Now, we've covered here on InfoWars this morning uh, a WikiLeaks email exchange between John Podesta regarding uh, a Clinton operative and uh, what he had to say about black voters and capitalizing on their quote unquote stupidity and we really know how Clinton feels and her staff feels about uh, about uh, black Americans about this community and our nation and we really understand uh, that they're wanting to use them like they've always done they could rely on the black vote to get uh, Democrats into office and we're seeing that uh, blow up in their face because we really know how they feel Check out this article, Erica Garner rips on the Clinton camp regarding these emails and this latest stump while you're at it. Be sure to check out our channel, Infowars.com. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars. Welcome back to the Infowars Nightly News. Owen Schroyer with you, and I'm joined by Jack Posobiec, the Special Operations Director for Citizens for Trump. He's been very enlightening with some of the intel he's provided us, and he's got more intel for us. We're going to discuss everything election with him. Jack, thanks for coming on with us again. Thanks for having me on, Owen. It's always great to be here. Well, there's a lot for us to talk about, but I want to talk about first something we were discussing yesterday, and that was the hack of Stop the Steal. We're getting hacked now when we're trying to watch the polls. What do you know about this? So StopTheSteal.org yesterday suffered a DDoS attack, a distributed denial of service attack. Very similar, coincidentally, to the one that we saw across the entire United States last week. So a lot of similar fingerprints and some evidence that our tech team is now uh, putting together that seems to be along the same lines of, they can't say specifically who, but we assess, you know, we think we know who the culprits are, but it's probably the same group that actually shut down the internet last week, right before uh, Julian Assange went silent. Yeah, and originally when we were talking, we were both thinking, oh, you know, maybe this is due to overload of traffic because they'd been marketing this. They were pushing this on all different platforms, which would have been a good thing. We said, wow, this is great. People want to monitor the polls. All these people are coming to stop the steal. This is effective marketing to try to keep this election uh, integrity filled. But we found out, no, it was actually a hack. And it goes to show you, I think, that Anybody is susceptible to hacking, and this is a nonpartisan issue, whether it's Hillary Clinton's emails or Stop the Steal. Is hacking something we're just going to have to deal with now? That's absolutely right. And honestly, I, I've always been a big advocate of telling people that, look, you are going to get hacked. Your password can get cracked, period. I don't care how crazy it is and how many different names you use in there. And that's why I'm a big advocate for encryption. You have to encrypt your stuff. End-to-end -end encryption, don't let the keys that resist, uh, reside on the server. Keep your communications encrypted, and that way when you do get hacked, nobody's going to be able to see what it was. And that's just something for your private stuff, not just politics, completely nonpartisan. Just, I don't want people seeing my emails, you know? Right, and it's just, it's strange because it's becoming uh, something that we see more and more of, and I guess the people obviously hope that it never comes to their front door. That's always the hope. Let's get back to the polls for a second here. Now, we were discussing earlier about how the media polls are saying one thing, internal polling is saying another thing. 
the eye test is saying something completely different altogether when you talk about rally turnout. But what are you hearing about the media polls right now and their accuracy? So, Owen, I have some sources that met at the highest levels of the RNC earlier today, and they've showed us basically their internal polls. And what we're seeing is completely separate from the media polls. Now, there are some good scientific polls out there, like Axiom Strategies Group and their battleground studies. They actually go and, and target battleground counties. But those aren't the ones that you're going to see on Wall Street Journal, on CNN, on Fox News, on MSNBC, these mainstream media outlets. Because all of those ones are throwing these insane, totally off-the-wall, skewed polls out there in an attempt, a PSYOP, essentially, to depress uh, Trump voters, to demoralize Trump voters, and to make them think that Hillary is going to win. Well, there's two issues that have come to play here. Number one, they realized that they weren't able to demoralize the Trump voters. It just galvanized them further. And number two, it realized that it was actually starting to get, tell Hillary voters that to uh, sort of tune out of the race and they didn't care anymore. So I think your average Hillary voter that's watching nothing but, you know, Rachel Maddow, that guy, and reading Huffington Post thinks the race is over. So, hey, why do I have to turn out on November 8th? Yeah, and we know how they rigged the polls. Of course, mainstream media is guilty of this. We see how they skew the numbers based on who they survey, who they pull, favoring Democrats. And we know how we're trying to keep the integrity of this election with Stop the Steal and doing exit polls and doing poll watching. Do you think that maybe this has gotten the establishment and the mainstream media scared that the tactics that we're going to use to maintain the integrity of this election with citizen action on the ground, that they might not be able to skew the actual election like they skew the polls? I absolutely think it's got them scared. You know, General Patton once said that you're taking the most flack when you know you're right over the target. And I think that's exactly the situation we find ourselves in today. There have been no less than, I think, a dozen uh, articles written in the mainstream media and the liberal press, the Daily Beast, you know, the, you know the ones, uh, about Stop the Steal and about what Citizens for Trump and MAGA 3X are going to be doing on Election Day. And all we're saying, and they're calling us everything under the sun, they're calling us racist, misogynist, uh, targeting minorities, vote intimidation. And all we're saying is, whoa, whoa. Citizens for Trump with Stop the Steal and Operation MAGA 3X, all we're doing is we're doing basic exit polling uh, for, uh, for these polls, and we are going to have citizens going out and essentially uh, keeping an eye on what's going on in the world. That's, that's all we're trying to do, and there's nothing uh, covert, there's nothing clandestine about this. It's completely open and to the public. But for some reason, it's got the mainstream media and the establishment incredibly scared. Well, and think about this. We've got the Democratic operatives, the left of the side of this, the Hillary Clinton side of this, that have been caught breaking the law in, in multiple different laws, electioneering laws, um, voter intimidation laws. We've been caught. They've been caught. And there seems to be no action here. So it's amazing. You know what? This is kind of what it says to me. If my government is going to ignore this, and if my government is not going to take action, well, you know what? This is my government. I am we the people, so I'm going to take action. And that's kind of what this is. This is a citizen's movement. This is a grassroots movement to ensure the integrity of the election. And there's no laws being broken, by the way. Not a single one. We actually have several lawyers uh, that are completely nonpartisan that are coming on that are going to be helping us. I just had a very lengthy email uh, chain with one earlier today going through, OK, what specifically are the distances that someone has to stay from the polls? What can you wear? What can you not wear if you're doing the polling? Uh, we are going in to make sure that every single thing is in compliance with the law. And that we are using scientific methodology, the same methodology that's employed by, or at least supposedly employed by every single uh, major news agency and university that conducts exit polling. And now we're seeing more WikiLeaks to kind of move the conversation along a little bit of Hillary Clinton perhaps making illegal offers with Supreme Court justices' seats. What do you know about this? So late last night, uh, got across my desk, one of the new WikiLeaks and very deep within an email chain from John Podesta what, was a discussion regarding the, uh, the empty seat on the Supreme Court. So we've currently only got eight seats on the Supreme Court. They suggested appointing someone who is a federal judge currently, but is also the sister-in-law of the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan. Now, this email came out for several months ago, way before any of the, uh, the GOP sabotage and the attempted Paul Ryan coup ever took place. So when all that was going down, and currently, a lot of people are wondering, you know, what was the, the deal? What was struck? 
what was used to buy off Paul Ryan? Because Paul Ryan is clearly campaigning for Hillary Clinton at this point. We're now seeing the RNC cut ads for Hillary Clinton at this point. So what were some of the, the actual you know, favors that were promised to them as part of this deal? And now, according to WikiLeaks, we now have some evidence that a Supreme Court seat offer may have been made to Paul Ryan's sister-in-law. Yet, yeah, I'm sure there will be no investigation of this at all. The FBI is completely incompetent. We covered that earlier. And now let's talk about some of the GOP smearing of Trump. And you, you mentioned the ads, but think about this. And you can and mention those again in a second. But I'm sorry, I remember, I remember a certain pledge that the Republican establishment <laughs> made Donald Trump take. I recall a pledge... Oh, but pledge. I guess they didn't have to honor that pledge, did they? There was a pledge? Did we sign a pledge? What was that? A pledge, yeah. They seem to forgot <laughs> they, they forgot the pledge as soon as Donald Trump became the nominee. Well, you've seen the same people that they get up and swear to the Constitution, so that, and they completely break that. So it doesn't surprise me, not the least, that all of them are breaking. The RNC is breaking the RNC's own pledge. They're now running anti-Trump ads for Republican candidates that have, quote unquote, stood up to Donald Trump in districts across the United States. Uh, they are refusing to pay staffers, their own staffers. So the RNC is refusing to pay RNC staffers that support Trump. Uh, there is a whole scale, wholesale schism going on, the likes of which we haven't seen in you know hundreds of years in politics uh, within the GOP. And basically, it's are you with the establishment or are you with the people? Right now, short answer, Jack the Special Operations Director for Citizens for Trump. Where do you think Trump stands as far as getting 270 in the Electoral College? Well, I think the fight is currently Florida. I think that uh, Trump is going to do very well there. I think he's going to do a lot better than people think, but it's, it's definitely a street fight that he finds himself in. And Hillary Clinton knows that too. The difference is that Trump supporters are much, much more motivated and the enthusiasm gap that you've seen with these rallies is what's going to be able to sustain him. And that is the reason they're pushing this PSYOP as hard as they can with these, these false polls and this narrative that the race is already over. If Trump supporters remain, uh, remain vigilant, if people would use the MAGA 3X operation that we've talked about, bring three extra voters out to the polls with you, Hillary doesn't stand a chance. Could not agree more. Thank you, Jack, for joining us. Please go to InfoWarsStore.com. Support this broadcast. We'll be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central.